All right, everyone, please come to the center of your mat. Seated on top of a bolster or a blanket is going to be the most helpful here. It just gives you a little bit of a lift so your pelvis finds a little bit more neutrality, especially if you tend to be a little bit tight in your hips. We're going to come into a pose that's called Supasana. It translates to easy pose. So just one ankle in the front of the other. You don't have to cross legs unless that feels more comfortable for you. So just one ankle in front. Make sure that your bum is on top of your pillow. And if you're like me, my knees come out. And then just place your hands somewhere on your thighs. And then allow your eye gaze to become soft or maybe even close your eyes. And just for a few moments, just recognize the natural rhythm of your breath. Don't need to attribute a good or a bad to it. And then see if you can lengthen your inhales, make them equal to the length of your exhales. This is a gentle class, so just see if you can find a little bit of ease. It's gentle and breezy. Don't need to stick, don't need to hold. And it might even help you if you place one hand on your belly. So as you inhale, you can feel how your belly expands outward. And as you exhale, how it gently comes in slightly. And then once or maybe several times, if it suits you, on an inhale, reach your shoulders up towards your ears, bring them down behind you, and then glide your shoulder blades down your hands. You might climb up a little bit higher in your thighs if you've got them there. If that felt good to you, do you want to do that several more times? Simply move with your breath. The inhale brings your shoulders up. And on your exhales, find space through your collarbones as your shoulders glide down. And at this time, I'd like to invite you to set a dedication or an intention for this practice today. Maybe something you've been considering for a while. Maybe something that's caught your attention. Something your, your mind has been just returning to. And if this causes you any, any anxiety, then I invite you to simply let go and allow things to be easy. A lot of times the uh, struggles that we create are our own and things can be much easier. So allow things to be easy, that will be mine. If it resonates with you, please take that on as well. I'm gonna take a couple breaths together as community to seal these dedications. So on an inhale, take a really deep breath in, flow all the way, feel your ribcage expand on all sides. And on an exhale, release. Maybe even sigh through parted lips, go all the way down to the bottom to the valley of your breath. And again, really deep breath in, fill up all the way. And then on an exhale, simply release it. And then once more on your own for yourself. And then if you'd like to keep your eyes closed, you certainly can. If you want to allow your eyelids to drift open, you can do that as well. We're going to start with just making some circles with our nose. So I'm going to be moving to my right. I'm on an inhale, I'm going to lift up my chin, take my nose all the way around to the right. On an exhale, I'm going to bring down. So I've got lots of length in the back of my head. It's okay to slouch a little bit. And then on an inhale, I'm going to take it out to the left, up for the ceiling. And on an exhale, I'm going to drop it around toward the right until my chin comes about in line with my sternum. Then on an inhale, again out to the left, lifting up. I'm going to pause at the very top of my nose, pointing up to the sky. And this time on my exhale, I'm going to take it to the left. So whichever direction feels best for you. My chin comes down towards my sternum on an inhale, coming around to the right again. Just drawing a big circle with my nose. Exhale to the left. One more cycle, just like that. And then once I come back to the center, I'm simply going to bring my head back up so that my chin is right to the center. I'm gonna shift back just a bit so my ears are over my shoulders, so I'm not leaning forward too much. I'm gonna cross my arms across my legs. So for me, my right hand is on the outside. So your hands might be all the way up towards your hips. That works for me. If you've got longer arms, you might come all the way over. It's okay if you're bending over because I'm gonna move with that. So, on an inhale, you're going to reach up your chin like we were just doing. Your fingertips might slide up a little bit. 
And then on an exhale, you're gonna curve your spine, bring your chin into your chest. It's okay to really draw back. You might find your knees sway up a bit, that's fine. Inhale, take it forward. It's okay as your fingertips slide against your thighs. Exhale, bring your chin in, round out your spine, gaze down. Once more like that, inhale, lift up. Exhale, draw it back in. It's okay if your chest gets in the way, just adjust. And then bring your head back up to neutral. You're gonna keep your arms kind of crossed as they are, and then you're gonna either take hands to shoulders, or if it's comfortable on your shoulders, you wrap either backs of hands together, or all the way around so your palms are together. So this is Garudasana arms, eagle arms. We're gonna take a similar shape. On an inhale, lift up your elbows, look up towards your fingertips. And then on an exhale, bring your elbows in towards your belly, curl in. Inhale, lift you up. Look up towards your fingertips as they lift. You might find a deep stretch through your back, through your shoulders. Exhale, take it in. One more time like that. Deep breath in, find expansion, find space. Exhale, pull in, elbows towards belly, round in. Release your legs if they're getting tense. And then simply unravel everything. Reach your arms out and up. Inhale, maybe your palms press above you, maybe you have uh, shoulder distance. Exhale, hands to your heart. All right, now I'm gonna switch that out. So this time my left arm is on the top and my right is on the bottom. Hands to thighs, knees, my up, you up towards your hips. We're gonna take those same inhales. Inhale, send your gaze up. Your spine becomes really long and straight. Exhale, curl your chin in. Reach down, maybe your hands slide to the outsides of your thighs. Inhale, reach up, adjust your arms so you've got room for your chest, gaze up, exhale, curling. Twice more like that, your own breath. What can you release? And then come right back up to that neutral. Once again, you're going to keep the cross of your arms. Maybe hands come to shoulders. Or if this works for your shoulders, start to bring backs of hands together or wrap all the way so you've got a full wrap. Palms fresh, pressing in, Garudasana arms. Inhale, lift up, elbows. Keep your fingertips reached away from your face. Inhale, look up. Exhale, curl elbows in, round. Inhale, expand upward. Notice if you're holding out extension in your legs, see if you can soften. Exhale. Draw everything in towards your midline. Fingertips reaching away from face. Last time like that. Inhale, lift up. Exhale. Come right back up to center to neutral. Unravel your arms, then reach your arms out and up on a deep breath in. Maybe they press above you. And then on an exhale, take your hands into your heart center. Nice. Switch out the cross of your legs. So this might feel awkward. Life's awkward, what can I tell you? <laughs> and you might find that your hips rise up a little bit. We usually tend to have a side that we favor. Um, so this might be your awkward side. We're going to take a forward fold here. So recognize that you might be tight, your knees might come up, you might not come all the way down. We're actually gonna shrug forward. And you're gonna lean forward and if your palms are here, you're gonna support yourself. If you've got the mobility to come all the way down onto your forearms, flip your palms up. See if you can make sure that your forearms are parallel with each other. And then simply drop your head down. Allow yourself to surrender in this posture. As your breathing has anything changed, do you feel like there's different muscles in your body that are reacting differently than before? Perhaps you're feeling it simply because you've ch changed out your legs and your sukhasana posture. Find the release, find your softness. Then keeping your head heavy, if your palms are placed up, press your hands into the mat or onto the floor, and then keeping your head heavy as long as you can. Start to press your way up till your shoulders are over your hips, and then unravel. 
lift up your head, stack your head on top of your shoulders. Awesome. We're going to take a forward fold here. So again, this is going to be a little bit of a softer motion. So uncross your legs, and you're going to bend your knees out in front of you. So if I had my uh, knees in front of my hips, it'd be straight ahead. I'm actually going to have a little bit of a wider uh, stance here. So I'm opening up my legs slightly. I'm keeping my knees bent. Flex your feet. So we're keeping lots of activity. This keeps us safe. And then we're going to take a really similar posture here where we're going to lean forward. So you're going to lean forward, palms up if that's comfortable for you, if that's just too vulnerable, take your hands down. You're going to let your head drop. Also, you might find you've got the spaciousness that you can start to press your feet forward. Just make sure you're keeping your toes flexed. You're pressing out through your heels. So there's a lot of activity coming through the bottom part of your body and everything through the top is getting soft and it's recognizing the lower part of your body is going to support you simply breathing. After several breaths, notice if anything has changed and maybe you can even slide your heels forward the tiniest bit more and find deeper softness. Just as we did on the previous pose, keep your head heavy. If your palms are lifted up, first press your hands down. Start to press your way up. You might find that your legs start to bend. Once again, pulling in, release your feet, let them get soft. And then you finally lift your head up. Finally, the last thing. I'm going to take a Janu Shirsasana option here. So I'm not going to be mirroring you. So you can either mirror me or you can listen to the sound of my voice. My left leg is, leg is extending. I'm going to bend my right knee. So my foot is going to come in. It might touch my thigh. It might be a little further apart. Touching is usually the most comfortable. If your left leg isn't straight, totally fine. Don't worry about it. <laughs> All right. First, you're going to take your left hand out to left, a little support, and take an inhale, reach your right arm up and over, really deep stretch. And then on an exhale, kind of complete that cycle, winding all the way around, and we're gonna end up in the front hands out in front of you. You're going to lean forward, drop your head, two breaths here, palms up. And that third exhale, tuck in your chin, flip your hands, start to press up, and eventually you roll all the way up. And then we're going to take the other side. So extend the right leg out, pull your left foot in, so your foot is coming closer to your thigh. You're going to take your right hand out to the right for a little support, lean over toward the right, lift up your left fingertips. Deep breath in, and then continue a cycle around toward the front. And then bring your right hand out in front as well. Drop your chin, get heavy. Keep flexing through the, uh, the leg that has the extension. So again, your right leg might be bent, it might be fully straight. You just move towards straighter. Two breaths once you get to where you're going. Use your breath to anchor this posture. And then after your second exhale, flip your palms, tuck your chin, keep it heavy, press your way up, and then unroll to lift up. Very nice. The next posture is going to be a Baddha Konasana. So this is a cobbler's pose, balance angle pose, sometimes called a butterfly. Start to bring your legs out in front of you, bent, and you're going to start to walk the soles of your feet together, and then allow your knees to drop out to the side. So for a lot of the poses we've been doing, we've been coming forward and just kind of drifting and drooping our shoulders. For this variation of this posture, we're going to take a more active stance. So take your hands either to your shins, your ankles, all the way to your feet. And if you can reach your feet, you might even use your thumbs to massage the soles of your feet. This is totally up to you. But wherever you are, you're going to inhale, lift up, shoulders back. See if you can find the straightest line for your hips, shoulders to crown of head. And then on an exhale, you're going to hinge your way forward. If you find your back begins to round, simply back out of posture. And see if you can bring your knees actively 
down to the mat. So there is some activity happening here. When you do that, you might find you might tilt a little further. Find long exhales, equally long inhale. Notice upon your left exhale, you can maybe tilt from your hips even more as you use active range of motion for your legs to press your knees down towards your mat or to the floor. Be gentle with yourself. And then keeping that straight spine, start to lift yourself all the way back up. Lean back slightly, take your hands to the backs of your knees in this pose for a little while and start to bring your knees right back up so that your feet are into the mat. Separate your feet about hips width distance, which would be about here. It's only about two fists, it's not much, or give yourself a little bit more space. I prefer this with a little more space. We're going to take a windshield wiper. So I'm going to have my hands behind me, like I'm, I don't know, about to watch TV or something. Gonna drop both knees over to the right, windshield wiper. Stay right here. On an exhale, bring your knees back to center. This helps engage your core, and then take your knees, pivot all the way to the other side. Adjust it any way that you need so you can find support. Also really helpful to have a pillow underneath you for this one. and then crumb right back up to center. We're actually gonna scooch off of our pillows or blankets for the moment. And you're gonna come onto your back any way you'd like. The posture is wind relieving pose. So simply bring your knees in close to you, release your head down onto the mat. If this feels uncomfortable for you, then take that pillow that you're using or blanket and place it underneath your head for more support. Otherwise, release all the way back. Your hands can be to the backs of your thighs, they can be to your shins, they can be on your knees. And gently pull in. If you'd like more activity through this pose, as you're pulling your shin, shins in toward you, also press your tailbone down toward the mat. You're likely to feel the stretch in your hip flexors. Can you take the tension out of your neck, out of your forehead, out of your jaw? Keeping your right knee bent in, extend your left leg up to the ceiling. All right, so I've got a little bit of gentle core here. Trust me here. You're gonna keep your right knee in, and then on an exhale, slowly, you're gonna to start to drop your left leg out in front of you. See if you can make this long, slow and controlled. Eventually, it's gonna simply drop down onto the mat, and then just release it. So a little bit of tricky core work in a gentle class. It's really important. So from here, Move your right ankle in circles around to the right. Just find some mobility here. Start to move it in the opposite direction. And then take your hands to your knee and simply move your leg around. So you've got your femur moving around in the socket, one direction, the other, just gently. Don't have anything to prove. And then you're going to take your knee and you're going to roll it all the way to the left side so you end up in a supine twist. Your leg might not come all the way down, it might be lifted. If so, you can place your hand underneath it or you can place a, uh, a blanket. Your right arm comes out to the side, to the right, to provide you with a counterbalance. If it feels okay on your neck, you can start to send your gaze over toward the right. Once you get to where you're going, four breaths. At the end of that fourth exhale, on an exhale, bring your head back to center and your knee back to center. Bring your hands back over to the leg that is bent, and then extend your right leg up. It might be straight, it might be bent. In fact, if this is uncomfortable on the left side, simply bend your left leg as well. We're gonna take what's called a hand to toe pose, but we're not putting hands on toes unless that's like really your jam. Um, hands to the backs of the thigh. So even a little bend to your right knee can be advantageous for a stretch through your hamstrings. You're going to slowly draw your leg as though your toes would touch above you. Shrug away. 
Release through your jaw, just breathe. Finding a little bit of flexion through your right toes and then even press up through your heel, even if your knee is bent. And then when you're ready, on an exhale, bend both knees into your chest again. Then extend both legs up towards the ceiling. See if you can keep your tailbone on the mat. If it starts to rock up, just bend your knees. Flex your toes towards your face, press your heels up. Lift your fingers up towards your toes so your hands are facing toward each other. Look straight up and then see if you can reach up Fingertips might even tap your toes. Exhale, release. Just twice more. Lift up. Release back. Final time. Take it all the way back. Pull both knees into your chest. Release soft wind relieving pose. Maybe rock side to side. And if you rock side to side, if you loosen the grip on your shins, then you might get more of a massage up towards the top of your bum, which is usually pretty nice. All right, come back to center. Your left knee is going to remain bent if this feels strange and familiar, then take the other side. Extend your right leg up toward the ceiling. Okay, trying to keep your hips and tailbone on the mat as slow as you can. Start to extend your right leg out, long, slow and controlled, flexing through your toes and pressing through your heel is gonna help also with engagement. And then finally, just drop all the way down onto the mat. Again, if this feels really stressful, then simply bend your knee instead. With your left foot, roll your ankle in one direction. And then take a spin in the other way. And then we're going to take that supine twist again. So hands to your left knee and draw it across your body. Again, maybe you use a, a, a prop one of your pillows to keep your knee elevated. Maybe it comes all the way down to the mat. Left arm comes out to provide you with a counterbalance. Adjust as you need, and maybe send a gaze in the direction of your left arm as well. Once you get to where you're going, four long, slow, deep breaths. At the end of that fourth exhale, on the exhale, take your chin and your head back up towards the center. And then you're going to extend your left leg up toward the ceiling again. It might be bent, it might be straight. You're just gonna to move towards straighter, flex toes towards face, press up through your left heel. Again, if you find discomfort in your right hip here, simply bend your knee and place your foot into the mat. You can bring your heel real close if you like. Hands to the backs of your thigh. If you ever need a strap or you just want to pull on your pants, that also works. So start to bring your thigh towards your chest. Press up for your left heel. Bent knees fine. Relax your jaw. Take the pose out of your forehead and drop your tongue from the roof of your mouth. Movement on your exhales. Your exhales as long as you can. And then as you're ready, bend your left knee, bend your right knee, pull it in towards you. And then you're going to extend both legs up toward the ceiling. Again, see if you can rock down so that your hips, your tailbone is pressing down. Your low belly is drawing to your mat, so you're simply engaging your core. Flex your heels, point. Uh, press through your heels and pull with your toes. Again, bent knees are perfectly fine. And then three times you're going to do this again. Reach your arms up. Palms are facing each other. Lift up towards your feet. You can lift up your shoulders. Try to keep your hips down. Release all the way down. Lift up on an inhale. 
And exhale, take it back down. Final time like that. Lift up. I know it's a lot. Exhale, take it back down. Release. Pull your knees to your chest. Again, Yogi's choice. What do you want to see? A tight winter leading pose, lots of stretch through your hip flexors, or looser rock side to side that's comfortable on your low back. Helpful if you have a yoga mat here on a hard surface. And then extend your legs out in front of you. Reach your arms up above your head. We're going to take a reclined crescent pose here. So keeping your torso generally where it is, walk your legs over to the right, and then arc your arms over to the right as well. Try to keep your left shoulder down to the mat. Option to take your right hand around your left wrist for a little added stretch. Also option to cross the left ankle over right. Notice if your left hip has a tendency to roll up and away from you. See if you can just guide it back down and simply breathe here. Imagine that your breath could actually come between the bones and the muscles that are on the left side of your body. Give yourself that illusion. And on your exhales, find the quiet. Okay, you let go over your kneecaps active, and you let go. If you've taken that wrist grip, release your right hand. Uncross the left leg if you took that option. Take everything back to center and then we're gonna to move toward the left. So first start with your legs shifting over to left. So toward the corner of your yoga mat. Then arc your arms in the upper part of your torso over to the left. You're still trying to keep your torso generally where it was. Left fingertips to right wrist is an option. So you can keep right shoulder down. Option to cross right ankle over left. Find that same breath that you cultivated at the beginning of this class. Notice if any of your tension has decided to pick up residency, either in your physical body or in your thoughts. If there's anything that's worthy of that, just gently invite it away. And then if you took a class with your fingers, release that, let it go soft, uncross your right leg, start to bring everything back to center. Good morning stretch, point your toes out in front of you, reach your arm up above your head. Maybe your low back comes away. If that happens, what happens if you try to press your low back into the mat? What kind of length and expansion can you find there? Maybe just play with that. What are those different sensations that you experience? What feels best? What feels different? Is there anything that's unexpected? And then roll over onto one side. You will use choice and you're going to press your way up to seated ones again. Find your pillow or your blanket. You're going to sit on it once more. So find yourself into Kasana pose. So again, that's one ankle in front of the other. And then switch it out so you have the awkward way. If you already know my tricks, then you're already in the awkward position. <laughs> and I'm going to go through a couple uh, twists here. So on an inhale, reach your arms out and up. I'm going to be twisting to my left. So my right hand is on top of my knee or to my thigh, left fingertips behind me. So I've got a little bit of um, grip on the ground. Inhale, lift up even higher. On an exhale, twist more deeply. First twist at your belly. 
then toward your chest. And then if it's accessible, turn your left, your chin toward the left as well. You might even be looking behind you. Notice if you've shifted all your weight to your left hip. If so, share the responsibility, shift your weight over to the right as well. So with every inhale, you lift up, find yourself grow taller, the tallest you can be. And on your exhales, that's when you deepen. On your next exhale, turn your chin back to center first. Then unravel, inhale, reach your arms out and up. Take up a lot of space. On an exhale, twist to the opposite side. So for me, I'm turning to my right. My left hand is toward my right thigh. My right fingertips behind me. Breath in, lengthen, lots of space. Exhale, twist at my belly first. Using the tension of my fingers, that little bit of grip. And then I'm twisting towards my chest. And then it is comfortable for me. So I'm going to send my chin like it's angling toward my right shoulder. Even here, I'm going to shrug my right shoulder behind me. And I'm even going to send my eyeballs to the right side of my eye sockets. You can use your left hand on your right thigh to assist your twist. Make sure that you're sharing the responsibility of the weight of your body and your left hip as well as your right. Simply breathe. On your next exhale, bring your chin back towards the front. Then unravel, lift your arms up towards the ceiling, maybe palms press. We're going to take these poses of moving with breath. So on an exhale, twist to your left, all the way to the end of that exhale. Then on your inhale, you're going to take it all the way back to center, unravel, palms lift up, exhale, twist toward the right. Once more on either side, breath in, fill up, drop everything that supports your dedication, exhale, twist, release everything that doesn't. Once more, inhale, lift up. Exhale, take it to the right. Inhale, lift up. And this time on an exhale, palms press, bring your thumbs in towards your heart center, Anjali Mudra, bow your chin towards your chest. Keeping your legs as they are. This should be the opposite cross that we had from the beginning. We're gonna take a similar pose, but different hip. You're gonna to start to walk yourself forward. Again, if this doesn't feel comfortable, you can't come all the way down to your forearms. Stay up on hands, maybe even fingers, um, spider fingers. Drop your head, let your hand get heavy. And if it is comfortable to come all the way down on your forearms, flip palms up, release. Five more breaths here. At the end of your fifth exhale, flip palms. You've taken that. Keep your head heavy, chin into your chest, and start to roll your way up to seated. Eventually, your head comes up over your shoulders, which is over your hips, your hands are to your knees. We're gonna take some seated cow and cat here. It's okay if your knees tend to come up during this. On an inhale, swing your heart forward, look up. On an exhale, lean back, arch your spine, look down towards your feet, maybe even belly. Inhale, swing your heart forward. Shoulder blades touch on your back, gaze up, exhale, release it. Three more times like that. You can make this very exaggerated if you'd like. Now after that final time, come right back up to seated. We're gonna come into um, a back bend. You've done a lot of forward folding. So set your uh, prop off to the side. And we're first going to take a reverse tabletop pose. It can be a little bit of a test. Um, so, you know, do what your body says. Your feet are going to be hips with distance apart. So your knees in line with your hips, your feet are just right in front of that. Hands behind you, again, this is kind of like TV watching pose. 
I don't care really if your fingertips are pointed in or away, whatever feels best for this variation of this pose. You're going to press through your feet and your hands, lift your hips up, slide your tailbone like it's gonna reach the backs of your knees, look up, press away with your hands on an exhale, start to drop down. Your bum touches and you're gonna lift right back up, inhale, lift up. Bring your tailbone down and back. This is elongating and extending your hip flexors. Exhale, slowly, slowly, slowly drop. Keep your fingertips spread wide. Just tap down and then on an inhale, lift up. Last time. Lots of space to the front of your body. Press through your hands, press through your feet. Exhale, release it all the way back down. And then just wrap your arms around your shins. Drop your head, lift up. Start to bring your chin back up. Take your hands to the backs of your thighs and you're gonna lower yourself all the way onto your mat. No funny stuff this time. <laughs> and then scooch in just a little bit. We're going to take um, a couple variations of a bridge pose. So for the first one, it's gonna be um, a little bit more static. So you're going to bring your feet in. So if your arms are alongside your body, you can basically tickle the backs of your heels. So if I can't reach my heel a bit too far, if I can like grab my entire ankles, they're a little bit too close. Just barely want to be able to graze them. Press through your feet, press through your arms on an inhale, wave your hips up, lift up, keep your chin up as much as you can towards the ceiling. A little bit of tension to your bum so you can protect yourself. Again, just like we did with the reverse tabletop, you're going to act as though you could reach your tailbone towards the backs of your knees. Hip extension, simply breathe. If you're looking for more, wrap over onto one shoulder and have your pinky on the mat, then the other interlace your fingertips. We'll be here forever. Simply breathe. Press through feet. Press through whatever is pressing into the mat. If you've taken the finger interlacing, unravel fingertips, shrug under your shoulders. And then ever so slowly start to wind your back onto the mat. It's a little bit helpful, I think, to lift up heels, give yourself a little bit more space. Go all the way down until everything of your spine, all the way down to your hips is touching the mat. Separate your feet a little bit wider. For those of you who are tall, your feet will come all the way to the edge of the mat. Not for me. Drop both knees over to the right, windshield wiper, simply relax. On an exhale, take your knees back up to center, rock them over to the opposite side. Or can you let go of them? And at the end of that third exhale, bring your knees right back up. Walk your feet back in line where they were to begin with, but they were in line, so you've got this like hips, knees, heels, uh, I don't know, line. <laughs> and we're going to take a little bit of a flow for a bridge. So for this version, on your inhales, you're going to lift up your hips, reach your arms up and back, maybe the backs of your palms touch the mat behind you or the ground. And then on an exhale, you're going to bring your arms and your hips down. Again, maybe if it feels good for you, lift your heels. I prefer that. There's less crunching my low back. Come all the way down. Inhale, lift up. Lift up hips. Maybe you can lift up your heels here if this is what serves you. Maybe backs of palms press, long exhale. Can you accentuate the touch of your back at every moment as you come back down? Continue moving with your own breath here. Deep inhales. And exhales bring you down. And then just one more, wherever you are. Okay, once your heels have landed, your hips have landed, your hands have landed, walk your feet out from you just a little bit. And they're going to take that same bound angle pose, but reclined version. Start to heel toe your feet together until the soles of your feet are touching and then allow your knees to drop out to the side. You might find that to find this pose, you need to take your arms alongside you, 
lift up your hips, slide your tailbone underneath, and then release back down. Sometimes this makes this a little bit more accessible for low back. That said, it might add some intensification in your hip flexors. If this feels like much too much, you can always place some props, some of those pillows underneath your legs. If you're not needing those, then one thing you can also do is take your hands, place your thumbs into your hip crease and offer yourself a massage. So just do it nicely. So like no, no raw thing here. <laughs> just a nice touch, reminding your muscles that this is a relaxed state, even though it might be an unusual one. And then you can leave your hands on your thighs alongside your body, perhaps placing both hands on your belly or maybe one hand on the heart, one hand on your belly. Allow your eye gaze to soften once again as it did perhaps at the beginning of class or allow your eyes to close. See if you can remove physical effort from this posture. Taking a moment to check in. Is the quality of your breath any different than at the beginning of the class? Maybe it's the same, maybe it's different. It's not good or bad. Simply acknowledge where you are at this moment. You know that it's ever changing. What is always the same? What's fleeting? It allows you to let go and let things be easier. If you need a little bit more time, take it. Otherwise, start to drift your hands back to your thighs if they're not there already. Take your hands to the outer edges of your thighs and then help to walk your knees up toward each other. You'll come on to the soles of your feet once again. Ever so gently pull your knees to your chest so not really tight. Maybe even you just take your hands to your knees and then make some gentle circles in one direction and the other. If it does feel good for to you to pull in tight, then please do that. I tend to like a, a looser configuration after that pose. I'm going to keep my right knee in, extend my left leg out in front of me, release on the mat. I'm going to take this to find twist like we did somewhere in the beginning, of uh, the middle of the class rather, pulling my right knee across my body. I'm going to adjust my shoulders. So I can bring my right arm out to the side, send my gaze out to the right, right. Allow my eyes to close. And then remove effort. On an exhale, bring your head and knee back to center. Pull your left knee into your chest as well. Then extend the right leg out in front of you. Let it drop on the mat. Get soft, get heavy. Pull your left knee across your body for that same twist, opposite direction, same but different. 
Left arm out comes out as a counter. You can have your elbow bent or it can be straight. Whatever you can find the most relaxation in. Eyes become heavy once again. Try less. Go 15% of your effort. Don't need to try. Allow it to be easy. Okay, give you more time on the side to make this feel even and take a little bit more time. Otherwise, on an exhale, Take your chin back up toward the ceiling, bring your left knee in, so your left hip drops in. Pull your right knee in close. And again, this could be tight pull, this could be loose. Give yourself several breaths. And then you're going to release your legs out in front of you. Our final posture of this class is Shavasana. I'm going to guide us through some breathing. So to come to your corpse pose, your legs come out, feet about the same width as your mat, depends on your height, and your body construction, let your feet drop out to the sides. Find some, uh, just a place where you can be still for a while. Face means pulling a blanket over you, adjusting your clothes, adjusting the lighting. Just take a few moments to set yourself up for that. It's worth it, you're worth it, I promise. And if you haven't already, allow your eyelids to close. If that feels too vulnerable, then do keep them open. My, recommend, my recommendation is, if it is comfortable, let your eyes close. We're gonna do a little bit of breathing here. We're gonna breathe in for five. Five, four, three, two, one. Exhale for five, four, three, two, one, inhale for five, four, three, two, one. Exhale for six, five, four, three, two, one. Inhale for five, four, three, two, one. Exhale for seven, six, Five, four, three, two, one. Inhale for five, four, three, two, one. Exhale for seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. Inhale for five, four, three, two, one, exhale for seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. Continue on your own. Allow your thoughts to drift away from the counting and allow your breath to occur more naturally. And then begin the systematic process of letting go, starting with the very bottom of your body, letting the soles of your feet get soft, your feet have flopped out to the sides, your calves are relaxed, your kneecaps drop. Heavy thighs, weighted hips, soft belly. Your heart is supported by your shoulder blades behind you and your strong back, your shoulders release back. 
Upper arms, elbows, forearms and wrists are soft. Backs of hands release. Feel the temperature of the air on your palms. Allow your fingers to find their natural curvature. Allow your neck to be released. If it feels tight, swallow to release it. Separate your bottom jaw from the top. Release your tongue from the roof of your mouth. Hollow cheeks, heavy eyes, closed eyelids, smooth forehead, simply be. Breathe and allow it to be easy. Allow your breath to become a little deeper, a little fuller. Again, drawing what supports your dedication, release that if it doesn't. And with that in mind, start to find some movements in your extremities, your fingertips and your toes, moving in circles through your ankles and your wrists, perhaps dropping one ear down toward the mat and then the other. And allow those movements to become slowly larger, waking up your physical body. And when you're ready, roll over onto one side, traditionally your right, and pause for a few moments, recognizing this transition from your corpse pose, your shavasana, into the rest of your life. Make your eyes close as best you can. Make your way to a seated posture, your choice, perhaps on a blanket or not, any way you would like. We'll be in a very brief meditation and focus. On your next inhalation, reach your arms out and up, palms to press above you. And on the next, I'll take your thumbs to the space between your eyebrows for clarity of thought. Bring them down to your lips for clarity of speech. And then to your heart for clarity of action. Bow your head to your heart. Symbol of honor and of gratitude. Thank you so much for sharing your practice with me. And thank you for helping me deepen my own. And we all let go so that things can be easy as they are. In the name of the highest good, namaste. All right, I'm unmuting everybody. Everybody. Namaste.